Law is meant to arrange a just ordering of society. Criminal law is meant to further that aim by punishing people who disobey the law. Not all laws are backed by the threat of punishment. Criminal law comprises the set of laws that are directly backed by the threat of punishment. A just society will not often need to use that threat or deliver on it. If justice is done, it will be seen to be done. Citizens readily obey laws they see as just. Nevertheless, even in a just society, the threat of punishment is needed to correct those who do not obey and to assure those who do obey that others will also. A just government rests upon the consent of the governed. In a just society, criminal punishment will be rare and measured. The United States is the most punitive society on earth. At this moment, over 2.3 million people are confined behind bars in the United States. The public budget for this comes to over $80 billion a year. That averages out to about $35,000 a year per incarcerated person. That's about the same as the average tuition and fees for a year at a private college. 70% of people locked up in jails are not there because they have been convicted of a crime. They are awaiting trial. Crime rates have been falling steadily in the United States since the 1970s. Nonetheless, the number of people in confinement continues to grow. Studies show that almost the entire increase in the jailed population over the 15 years ending in 2014 was due to pretrial detention. The not convicted population in American jails is larger than most other countries' total incarcerated populations. Ponder these facts. America has less than 5% of the world's population, but almost 25% of the world's prisoners. More than 25% of the U.S. adult population has a criminal record. The rate of incarceration in this country is 5 to 10 times higher than rates in Western Europe. Another striking fact is the disproportionate impact upon communities of color. Our casebook notes that more than 20% of black men born in the last half century have been incarcerated for at least a year for a felony. The collateral effects of imprisonment multiply the consequences of a conviction. These can include losing the right to vote, being disqualified for government benefits, and being unable to get a job or to serve on a jury. Lawyers bear a special responsibility for this situation. The preamble to the Georgia Rules of Professional Conduct states, a lawyer as a member of the legal profession is a representative of clients, an officer of the legal system, and a public citizen having special responsibility for the quality of justice. A lawyer has three roles, as legal representative of clients, as an officer of the court, and as a public citizen having a duty to make the legal system just. Unlicensed people are excluded from the role of legal representative or legal advisor. The unauthorized practice of law is a crime punishable as a misdemeanor up to a year in confinement in the state of Georgia. Only licensed lawyers are allowed to make a living practicing law. This professional monopoly can be viewed cynically. The Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw quipped that all professions are conspiracies against the laity. 
But lay people have no special duty for the quality of justice as lawyers have. Lay people are at liberty to regard themselves solely as private citizens. Lawyers have private lives too, but they are also sworn and duty bound to be public citizens. It is the diligent performance of this special duty that justifies the monopoly privileges enjoyed by members of the legal profession. As Charles Houston, the first black graduate of Harvard Law School and later Dean of Howard Law School expressed it, a lawyer is either a social engineer or a parasite upon society. Accepting a special responsibility for the quality of justice means making it your personal project to build a just society. To be allowed to make a living by way of realizing justice is a high privilege indeed.